Good morning traders and welcome to Flow with the Markets Tuesday. Now in this edition we're going to have a look actually on the weekly, daily, foh and even the 50 minute for the intraday price action because I did miss to record the weekly outlook and setups. I was traveling, went to visit my grandma, didn't take my microphone and pretty much decided to take a little bit of a break and just chill for a little bit because September was pretty 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 rough. Uh, finishing with a losing month overall uh, in September it was pretty tough, especially the last two weeks. But right now, Q4 is here. We have three months ahead of us. Fresh month, fresh start. Let's, of course, focus. Keep showing up. Keep following the plan. And always remember to think long term. Because you can have a losing day. You can have a losing week. You can have a losing month. But then, of course, uh, with only one month, with only a couple of trades, everything can change. So keep showing up, right? So without further ado, I'm actually going to go straight into the video. There are no, not going to be any transitions. I'm just going to go in the market and analyze as I do, uh, but there are not going to be any time stops. So again, because the market is running, we're just going to go straight into trading right now. And I'm going to be making a better, even monthly edition on this Saturday. So stay tuned for that. Let's roll the intro and get started. All right, back at it. So in terms of news, uh, we do have NFP this week. So in terms of today, we don't have anything to worry about. Uh, but if we just check out very quickly this week, um, we do have on Wednesday. So we have NZD. Today we had the Aussie. Tomorrow we have the NZD interest rate decision. And then we have all of these kind of PMIs and PPIs and retail sales. And then a speech from the uh, from uh, ECB's the Grindos. And then we have services pmi speech speech so a lot of busy day tomorrow especially in terms of the euro and also the us dollar thursday does look a little bit quieter we have a couple of speeches right there uh, but nothing that is actually red impact and then of course on friday we have nfp which is definitely going to be uh, pretty important because um it's going to show us whether the economy is doing strong new jobs are created that could potentially even boost the us dollar further so as you actually have a look at the Dixie, this has been a monster that hasn't stopped for, yeah, well, for 10 consecutive weeks, we printed bullish. We broke this high, we broke this high, we are on our way to even taking out this high, which I do believe is the next uh, liquidity target, because apart from that, I don't see anything else. Everything is broken, the market does not initiate any sort of a pullback, so again, the question is, when are we going to start pulling back? Well, usually, when it takes some sort of a liquidity and that wasn't the liquidity. This right there wasn't a liquidity. The market just keeps breaking above them. So, of course, the next one is this one. So, we can potentially long until we get there. Now, dropping onto the daily time frame. So, you can see here on Thursday and Friday, we did have a little bit of a pullback, which is pretty good because that kind of gave us a 50% pullback within the overall daily range. So, at that time, the daily low was this, the daily high was that. The market did pull back and it filled that imbalance that was exactly around the 50%. And right now we make a brand new daily break of structure. So I'm just going to mark it like that. Again, guys, I'm just going to be a little bit faster in this one, not to lose your time and also to, to show up in the markets because they're already running. That is currently our daily range from this low to this high, very impulsive move yesterday. So again, the market opens and it just decided to massively push up. So currently in terms of higher lows and higher highs, uh, the daily range is exactly the same as the hourly range. So that is the low, that is the high. Uh, it is exactly the same on the daily and on the forage. Like there is no hourly pullback, like something like this, for example, to actually have like this to be the hourly higher low, but this to be the daily higher low. No, they're both the same. Where are we currently? Where we're at a higher high? What do we expect currently? We expect a potential pullback. Where? Potentially 50% and imbalance, okay? So, of course, right now on the intraday, if we start having like a nice 50 minute trend change to the downside, which we do have, we took out this high, we took out this low, we're already introducing a nice bearish pressure, uh, then of course we can try to take shorts. So, if I am trading this right now, I would personally look for a retest right there and then potentially start shorting. Of course, be mindful of your targets, like look to take, of course, the Asian low, look to take like targets below lows like that to the left. Because one single law like this can provide enough liquidity to reverse the market into the highs. Okay, so when you're trading counter trend right now, keeping in mind that the US dollar is extremely strong, right? Don't go very big on shorts. 
okay until we clearly start seeing that the market is actually bearish which is currently bullish okay so that's the dxy i mean previous daily high has been taken liquidity has been taken can this high be taken as well like yeah it could come in wick it out and then reverse currently like my the majority of my stop losses are wick outs like that taking a trade placing a stop loss above structure then it comes in wicks you out either by spread or by like a little wick and then it just fully reverses in the opposite direction so i am kind of reflecting right now that i need to keep a bigger stop loss so again kind of trying to figure out how to battle with this but currently that is the range on the dixie let me try to keep it nice simple and straightforward now look at the weekly candle already on eu so it's already the size of the previous weekly candle so the previous weekly candle is 160 pips this weekly candle is already 130 pips so this guy is expanding like crazy took out that liquidity low so oh my analysis still remains from last week i haven't even removed it let's see if it played out uh well no yeah i was looking for a big pullback the market dumped took out the liquidity then what happens after liquidity is taken we had a pullback we come in took out the high and then after we took out the high we immediately went down and took out the low so let me remove remove everything and yeah dropping onto the daily time frame so the most important part right now is that we have a daily break there it is so we respectively have a daily supply and a new daily range and again if you jump on the fourly time frame oh, why did this one print like that okay that is strange okay so maybe trading view is messed up a little bit that is forex.com uh but yeah so we should pretty much draw it like this okay so that is our daily high uh but you can see actually right here we do have that little zone that is actually a valid forward high okay but in terms of where the market currently is it's at a very big lower low it took liquidity there is like breaking this low to the to the left as well like the next target is gonna be that low potentially right here but again our first gonna initiate a pullback well let's see that's the forward high that's the forward low uh we have two imbalances one imbalance there's two imbalance and of course right now logically what i would expect to happen is for us to potentially pull back fill imbalance hopefully tap the 50 percent and then continue to dump targeting the forward low and of course targeting that old uh daily low to the left okay so in terms of the intraday right now i would like to see right now london opening in 10 minutes and really give me a nice momentous push to the upside to really show me that the market wants to go up because currently we do have this 50 minute trend change and we do have like this zone to trade from but i want you to have a look at the wicks like wick down wick down wick down wick down there is no strength although there is rejection happening from the downside so the market could already start running i don't like it very much but again similar to the dixie we do have a trend change we did take out the asian low so if we pull back and if we give a setup from here i would definitely be uh entertaining the idea of taking a long and of course if the market starts forming new valid ranges to the upside then of course keep following the longs until you're wrong and why do i shout longs right now well because i do expect the sort of a pullback but a big but the market can just decide right now to dump and continue trading to the downside being in this very massive uh bearish trend right now with an extremely bullish dollar and with extremely bearish euro right so the us economy is doing much better than europe right this is why we're seeing the pound and the euro usd just plummeting to the downside so don't go very big on longs don't go very big on counter trends because you're gonna lose money it's gonna be much better for us to just wait for some sort of a pullback right now and the moment we see a bearish alignment right then just go short because again shorts are gonna be the high probability setup so those are potentially my scenarios on the euro right now it looks like it's gonna pump up a little bit to the upside taking out asian high hopefully push us up a little bit further and then for us to start taking shorts so let's see if we're gonna have a pullback day uh euro yen so that is my old analysis so yeah euro yen it looks like it didn't exit this consolidation the whole week but it actually came in and took out this liquidity that i indicated and after taking this liquidity then it started rushing to the next to the opposite liquidity so this analysis kind of remains the same no this is so that one was uh the swept one if i just quickly go to the weekly time frame yeah i mean the jpys are usually like like just look at this so i'm pretty much gonna say that i'm not gonna be looking to trade this the daily time frame is still the same as well so that is our daily daily lower high daily supply tapped in tapped in again and tapped in or right now it does look like it wants to make a daily structure break which is most likely where we're headed right now 
So yeah, dropping onto the 50 minute time frame. Like yesterday was a good idea because again, we have been indicating this liquidity for for two weeks now, I guess. Like last week, it just ranged inside this range. But right now, yesterday we came in, we took out that liquidity and then we immediately aligned bearish from here. And then again, can you catch any shorts on the way down? Well, that is your job, right? But daily was bearish, took out that weak high as liquidity and then it just massively reversed. Right now, uh, EJ is very tricky because it's very close to that liquidity low. Took out the Asian low. Then it came and took it out again, actually causing a 50 minute break of structure. So I really don't like trading it that low. So currently, I mean, it's, it's shorts and that is your zone. But I mean, look at how the break happened. So this market can either continue lower, take the liquidity and then start retracing up or it can like right now TC up, maybe give a little bit of a pullback similar to EU and then go down. But what I'm just going to say is you have a much better chance to trade EU right now rather than EJ uh, because EJ is stuck in a very big range. And of course, yeah, you can trade it from the low all the way to the high and then from the high all the way to the low. But right now it's in a very tricky situation because it's very close to taking out that hourly and daily low, right? But it's also a little bit extended and we can expect a pullback. So again, guys, flow with the 50 minute time frame or the 30 minute or the hourly, whatever is your middle time frame. And then just, of course, listen to it. Currently, it just wicked the slow. So it's shorts. That is the zone. If the zone breaks, you can go long expecting that pullback. Uh, but if it continues to go down, taking out this liquidity low, then, of course, you have to adapt because you're going to have a new hourly break. And then, of course, your range is going to look something like this. And then after this low is taken, then I would say it's definitely a, a much better chance to look for that pullback and to look for that imbalance to fill. OK, so that is going to be my outlook on Euro Yen. Uh, let's have a look at the Aussies. I still keep my analysis from last week. Uh, so we had a fall break. That was the current range. The market went down then it massively went up and then it massively went down. Okay, crazy, 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 crazy. So let's delete everything. Just go back to the weekly uh, quickly. Yeah, last week was just a very big mess. And right now we're starting to massively initiate to the downside. Well, that is because uh, Bank of Australia, they kept the rates the same. Right. And of course, that is bearish. That is bearish. So there is our daily break, new daily break of structure, new daily supply. Uh, it's going to be forming a new daily imbalance as well. Maybe when today's candle closes, uh, the folly time frame is also exactly the same as the daily. So the daily break is exactly the same as the folly break because we pushed up. Then we broke down and there is no folly lower high apart from this high. So currently from the high to the low, that's our range. There we found that daily imbalance. There is the 50% as well. So I mean, yeah, currently... Yeah, look at the market massively dumped lower. So it's very scary. And I mean, it's it's very low probability, but you had that breakdown. Then you had that trend change to the upside. You had this demand zone. So technically that could be the lower low on the foliage. So you could look for something like this. Enter with a confidence on the one on the, on the lower time frames. And then you, you decide, you, you can target Asian high, you can target the open of the imbalance, you can target 50% of the imbalance or even the 50%. How do we know where, where it's going to pull back? We don't. So this is why when you're trading counter trend, use fixed risk to rewards. So like if I take a trade right there and I have like a 3R, so let's just say I take a trade from here, stop loss below, and then I'm just going to exit a 3R. Like that is not even the Asian high. So just exit a 3R, take your profits because anytime the market can decide to, to reverse and flush. Why? Well, because we are massively bearish. Again, don't forget, we massively dumped right now and the market is very likely going to continue. So avoid going counter trend. But currently, that is the only setup we have on the intraday. So let's see how it goes. AJ. Okay, AJ, finally some sort of developments. And yeah, we were bearish. The market pulled back. It tries to push down. It failed and it came in, swept the high. And right now it's massively flushing lower. So on the weekly time frame, let's catch up on the weekly. Well, the weekly is still bullish. <laughs> the weekly is still bullish, but um, yeah, from low to high, pulls back. Essentially, this should be the liquidity. But of course, we're going to have to monitor the very recent sentiment of the market. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be wrong because the daily low is here. The daily high is here. The weekly low is here and the weekly high is here. All right. So daily is bullish. So again, whatever you mark up here. Right. All of this, this is all internal on the daily and the weekly. 
So the only not internal price action we have right now is the foage because the foage did have this very big range right there, but we finally broke out of it. So currently we can start playing with this very recent structure. So it had this faulty breakdown. And uh, yeah, pretty much you can take a high like this. That is your faulty lower high. At the lower low once again, so same stuff, right? So same stuff from high to low, the FIB, there is 50%. Uh, the daily time frame formed imbalance already. Uh, again, this is not a valid daily range, but it's a valid folly range. And I'm just taking the imbalance on the daily just to keep it simpler and not like have 10 imbalances on the four hour time frame. So again, in terms of the bias, looking for a pullback 50% imbalance fill and then continuation to the downside because that is what the most recent price action tells us. And then, of course, for injury opportunities, we're going to have the same situation here. The market is very likely going to make a trend change to the upside, give you a little bit of a pullback. But then, of course, be careful trading the pullback. Maybe take a little trade, exit fast. OK, so there is not even a 50 minute TC right there. So wait for a clear push, clear pullback, one minute confirmation or five minute, whatever the time frame you use is. Right. So in this case, if you use like a 30 minute time frame, it's fully bearish. I recently started using the 30 minute a lot and I'm loving it. So in this case, you cannot go long because the 30 minute high is here and the 30 minute low is here and you don't have a trend change. But the moment you go to the 15 into the five minute, they're already changing. So again, lower time frames are going to change first. Is it high probability? Not really. So I would much prefer to keep shorting rather than trying to catch the bottom. OK, so keep that in mind. And USD crazy again. Like broke the low, mass, massively broke the high, and right now massively broke the low. So weekly time frame massively uh, starting to push down right now already after filling in this imbalance to the fullest. Daily time frame, well, the daily is about to change. So as you can see, like on the Aussie, it already changed. This one is about to change. Uh, it's also about to be forming like a little bit of an imbalance. So already thinking ahead of time, most likely it's going to break, I hope. And then, yes, the quality time frame did have a here a little break up then we have the breakdown right there and then yes there is nothing else apart from this high so very crazy ranges right now on the aussies and the entities massive push up massive push down keep in mind tomorrow is the interest rate for uh, new zealand so that can definitely cause in some turbulence maybe take out load and make some massive moves as well so be careful but currently it's bearish and it's trading between this high to this low. There is a 50%. There is imbalance here, imbalance there, imbalance everywhere. And right now, once again, you have to make that choice. Do I still stay bearish, keep following the flow, or do I try to take a long trade? So that is your two choices. And I would, again, guys, give you my really honest and genuine advice is to stick with the trend. Because I also do try to go counter trend and it usually doesn't work really good. So again, it's a setup. A setup is a setup. You have to strike and if you have the confidences, go for it. Okay. But if you really want to increase your win rate and you really want to trade only high probability setups, then going with the trend is your best bet. So currently that is the structure. There has been a 50 minute trend change. The 30 minute is still bearish though. About to encounter this 30 minute zone. So if the 30 minute breaks, right, if the 30 minute breaks strongly and then it comes back to retest the 30 minute zone, then you can potentially look for a trade. Okay, so work with the time frames. To me, the 30 minute has been of a huge help because it helps me like uh, reduce uh, the reduce kind of the frequency of 50 minute breaks ups and downs. So NZD JPY is a int very interesting situation because that is the only kind of JPY that is still bullish. It's very strong. Like here it held and right now, technically, this is still our fall supply. Uh, sorry, demand. Because that is our fall break of structure up. And yeah, that's it. Yeah, that is it. Fowly low to fowly high, which is most likely going to be the daily high and low as well. Exactly the daily high and low as well. Imbalance is being filled. So NZD JPY is bullish. It's bullish. So um, <laughs> let's see. It's coming in with very big steam to the downside. It filled the imbalance. It's taking some, some liquidity right now. Like, look at that setup. Came in, reacted, took it out. And then it started. Like this week is all about this like on all pairs. You take a trade and it goes on, takes a low, takes a high, then comes back and then starts doing random shit. Um, pulling back into that hourly demand zone. So just looking at the rest of the pairs, again, I can presume that it's most likely going to break, but it's still tapping inside. If you start having like a 30 minute and a 50 minute clean bullish alignment, technically you can go for it. 
So right now uh, it's very choppy. So again, I would say when the, when the 50 minute looks like this, then just go to your 30 minute because there is a very clear 30 minute break here. There is a very clear 30 minute supply here. So it's still very bearish. Okay, so either wait for a 30 minute shift of structure, right? Or wait for right now for a new 30 minute range to form then a nice impulse away from it and then go long. Okay, but keep in mind, I mean, the NZD is, is weak interest rate tomorrow so be careful trading this but in terms of the voyage is still bullish uh, but again looking at that very recent momentum down i don't think it's gonna hold bullish but of course let's see usd jpy um yeah just continue to push up what i was i expecting here pullback oh yeah i was expecting for it to break the high and then initiate a pullback when no, it just broke the high pushed up then we had some crazy stuff happening here and then already on the way up so this one, yeah, wicked the low and then it broke this high and then this is pretty much our demand zone. So it's bullish. So it's bullish and that is our range. Right now it's pulling back. Look, look at the, with the candles right there at the top. They look very, very sketchy. Right there, right now we're having a very big, massive engulfing to the downside forming. So... Yeah, after taking out the Asian high, previous daily high was most likely taken. We have this very powerful alignment right now. So let's see. I mean, I'm really against trading JPYs, uh, but let's see. Again, just very simply retest, pull back, and then trading it towards the 50% the and the demand zone. So that is what I'm just going to say. It's at a very big car high. The daily time frame is bullish. Everything is bullish. So again, just wait for a little pullback. And then as soon as the market aligns bullish, then go for it. Because again, power is bullish, daily is bullish. So any long trade you have is very likely going to continue. Okay, so keep that in mind. But currently, after all of this very flat price action, we had a very nice bearish momentum. So uh, it can start collecting like all of these lows right there before maybe making a trend change and reversing higher so short-term shorts do look good let's see if it goes uh so ucat and use swiss i don't trade these guys and gu so gu also on lucky week on gu had a couple of uh, nasty stop losses uh i mean previous week so right now just to keep it very 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 simple weekly time frame is already making a massive move and uh, the next liquidity target is going to be pretty much that weekly low, which is very, very far away. Uh, on terms of the daily, I do think there was one more daily low right there that hasn't been taken. Yes, there it is. We're headed towards it. We do have a daily break of structure right there. So we do have a new daily lower high. Then transferring that onto the foliage, the foliage range broke here yesterday. And uh, so yesterday for my team, I said there is the imbalance right there. The market caused a uh, fall break of structure right there. Imbalance got filled in London Open, and then we just dumped like crazy without a stop. So I'm I'm really pissed because the market just keeps dumping like this, and uh, it doesn't give you an entry. So I'm very sure that there is a way like to, to break out trading and stuff like this. Uh, but again, like it's just tricky. So right now we are at a lower low, 30 minute aligned bullish. So we could definitely start preparing and I should be getting at my charts right now, potentially starting to prepare for longs. Again, low probability trading. So again, taking a long trade in a massive flush like this, not very good. But again, as you can see, 30 minute aligned bullish, uh, 50 minute aligned bullish, there is the zone. So if we have like a pullback towards the zone, then we can definitely look to trade. So I would imagine today is gonna go something like this, target Asian high, and then of course take your targets because you don't know um when and where the market will reverse and continue going with uh with the overall bearishness okay so that's g right now massively bearish of course we have a very 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 big quality range right now from this high to this low which is also the daily range uh, we do have imbalance around the 50 percent, which is something that we could look to fill but i do feel like we're just gonna have a brief pullback around 30 percent, and then the market is gonna dump so again guys if you have that bearish alignment and if the market gives you a little bit of a pullback and then you start seeing bearishness, then just go short because it's very weak. So that's GU and that is pretty much what I'm going to be looking for this morning. GJ looks flushing. Uh, okay, so yeah, okay, GJ looks pretty good. 
uh, because we have this daily bearish range, we have this hourly bearish range. It took a lot of time, but it finally came into the hourly supply zone on Friday, and then it just sold off. So technically, uh, this is the target. So this right now creates a brand new hourly break of structure on GJ, and uh, this is our hourly supply zone. So for supply zone, so this one is no longer relevant and uh yeah so we just have to move our fib from here to the current price section so we just took a low so in this case uh taking a long trade is indeed a high probability trade because after taking out the low we usually tend to start retracing so again wait for a 30 minute breakup or wait for a 50 minute breakup for even more confluence all right so there is the breakdown just happened actually this morning in the morning but right now it's still chopping around. So it can either continue flushing lower, maybe take out this liquidity low and then give us a bullish alignment. Or it can right now decide to pop up, give us that bullish alignment and then go up. Okay, so you have to wait and flow with this one because right now the intraday timeframes are just not looking clean. Okay, so wait for a clear push, which is what I like on GU, right? It's not the most momentous. It's not the most clear ones, but it's a nice push up that causes a 30 minute break and a 50 minute break. So... This is what I would like to see on GJ, for example, if I want to go long. So it's as simple as that. And uh, yeah, this is the weekly time frame. We took out that. No, we're about to take out that daily liquidity right there. So which is very likely where the next target is. So again, hopefully we have a pullback first. Then we get a big short from right there. And then we can, of course, target that daily low. So let's see. But of course, the market could first take out the low. And then you can look for a bullish alignment and look for that big hourly pullback. Um, uh, gold, let's have a look what is happening with, oh, nice. So gold is massively dropping. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty much making sense. It is, uh, oppositely correlated to the Dixie. So it doesn't really surprise me at all. On the weekly time frame, we're tapping inside this very big, uh, weekly demand zone, but just looking at how last week printed and looking at how this week is starting, I don't think we're going to hold very nicely. So that is most likely the next liquidity target. That is our weekly supply so let's see if it aligns with the daily and yes it does so weekly high and daily high massive flush lower for uh yeah for eight consecutive days okay or six bars so that is pretty much yeah six six days of massive sales so what can i tell you guys well keep shorting the guy all right so we just keep shorting and again gold i I don't trade gold. Again, you perfectly know. I just like analyzing it. It, it doesn't work amazing with how I trade right now. So there is our forward supply zone. So it just skip. I, I look at the look at these candles. Like just boop, 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 pings down, pings down, pings down. So there is most likely gonna be a sharp move up to grab some liquidity and then look to align bearish. Okay. So I don't know where the market is gonna pull back. I don't know if it's gonna pull back all the way up. Most likely not. But what I could tell you to expect is uh, some sort of a liquidity gap so either during uh, new york or during london today we could expect some sort of a push up and then if we have the first alignment then go for it because again the market is bearish and if the dxy keeps going up gold is going to keep going down it is just making sense to do so so once again right now we're a little bit low so avoid trading that low okay but again I as you can see like if i just hit replay right the market is right there and i'm gonna tell you at that time well, don't trade too low. It just took out the low. It's going to make a pullback. Okay. Next candle low. Okay. It's going to pull back. Oh, no. It's, it's right now. It's going to pull back. No, no. It's going to pull back. All right. Right now. It's going to pull back. And you can see the market just keeps flushing lower. So this is why, as I always say, flow with the 50 minute, right? So if the 50 minute goes bearish, you keep flowing with the 50 minute or of course the hourly or the 30 minute, whatever is your middle time frame. So again, remember you have a hard time frame direction middle time frame which is where you actually work with your internal structure of the major time frame and then and then if you want to you have an entry time frame right so for me voyage and daily hard time frame 30 minutes and 50 minutes uh, middle time frame five minutes and one minute entry time frame right so yeah gold pretty bearish uh, i would just love to see some sort of a pullback but if it just goes right now and starts making 50 minute bearish trend follow it until we take out that weekly low because I do think right now we might be headed to take out that weekly low and then maybe initiate a pullback. So keep that in mind. Oh, good lord indices. Uh, I got crushed on the indices. So it has been around two, two to three weeks that I'm actually trading indices and I love it. I'm still getting the hang of them. And uh, I actually opened a brand new account 
to just trade indices because on my current on my other accounts I can only take like uh, one lot, a minimum one lot, and I my account size does sustain one lot and even five lots, but I don't like that you cannot do like 1.20, 1.50, or maybe even 0 0.50. So I opened another account just for indices, and uh, like for one or two weeks I definitely went on a losing streak. So <laughs> so pretty 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 fun. Um, I'm gonna delete everything. So weekly time frame, bearish. It broke this weekly low. We do have a lot of weekly imbalance to fill right there, but we're currently just took out the previous weekly low. We can start expecting some sort of a pullback, but again, it's just bearish. Now the daily time frame is getting a little bit, it's getting a little bit choppy again because the weekly is low and the daily is getting low, right? And I would really start, I would really love to have like a little something like this. A little pop to the upside like that to just grab that liquidity and then to later start moving lower because i do see if you, if you actually observe this piece of price action we had this very nice drop and then the market did like this little daily kind of added range then broke down and then it whoop pushed up so right now we have this massive drop and the daily is making this shitty range so i really do hope we have something like this for us to just pop up to the upside fill in that imbalance right and then go short so in order to do that though, we are gonna need to have like some sort of a forward alignment to go uh, long, but the forward time frame yesterday broke structure down there. Most recent forward supply zone, uh, imbalance within this, so we are still bearish. So again, my outlook for today, I have two scenarios that I shared to my team uh, because still uh, the 50 minute is bearish. So the 50 minute is trading between this high and this low, so there is the last pullback, lower high, lower low. There is the 50 minute break of structure. We retested it five times, but we still haven't uh, done anything. So, two scenarios on your study for today take out Asian high and take out that high, and then get a TC on a lower time frame and go down, or fill the imbalance, tap inside the forward POI, and then go short in New York. Third scenario will be to make that forward train change. So, then we can start initiating that bigger pullback and come on in to take out uh, all of these highs right there to collect the liquidity, then to feel a bigger move down. So there are my three scenarios on uh, US 30. And pretty much that is for today. We were so far bearish, fall is bearish, everything is bearish. So we keep going bearish until we see that trend change. Although like last week, we did have this trend change right there. But again, at the end of the day, it went down and it made like one, two, three waves to the downside. So keep shorting. NASDAQ right now, it's, uh, it's the, the trickiest index of, of all. So weekly time frame definitely bearish. It actually took out that previous weekly low last week. So right now we could start expecting like a little bit of a weekly retracement to fill in that imbalance right there. Uh, going on to the daily time frame, the daily time frame is still bearish, trading from this high to this low. So I'm definitely looking for that weekly imbalance that aligns with the 50% of the daily. Dropping onto the hourly time frame, this is where it gets tricky because we had a break of structure up. And then we had a break of structure down right there. And technically right now we're trading from this forward high to this forward low and we're chopping inside. But again, keeping in mind how the daily looks like, I do think we have a little bit upside potential. So just take out that high to tap inside imbalance 50% and then from there start reversing. So my macro scenario will be something like this. Okay, and intraday, I would say don't trade intraday because it's tricky. So the current intraday is... Here, we have a 30 minute train change with a uh, 30 minute zone, and it's exactly the same as the 50 minute range. So when 30 minute and 50 minute are aligned, you usually get a very high probability trade on the indices, but I just want you to look at NASDAQ. And what is happening very recently is that we're in a range. Okay, so this is why I'm not gonna be trading NASDAQ until it takes out that forward high or like does something else. A much better ind index you can trade is SPX, which is very similar to, um, to US 30 right now. In fact, I'm actually really liking SPX. It kind of moves uh, in a cleaner fashion because US 30, a lot of times US 30 is gonna give you a stop loss while SPX is actually gonna hold from that zone. So currently uh, we had this high, lower low, pullback, lower high, lower low once again. So where is the high, lower high formation is right there. Right there, oops, did click the wrong run, hard time from supply. Imbalance was, Kind of already filled by that wick right there, but this wick took out the low, filled the imbalance, and then it kind of closed inside. So slightly bit tricky. And again, 30 minutes is exactly the same as with uh, US 30. So there is that 30 minute 
breakdown, which is the same with the 50 minute breakdown. So 50 minute also broke down right there, 50 minute high to 50 minute low. And we're still inside this zone right there. So again, two scenarios, take out the high and get the quick short trade right there, or take out that 30 minute high, tap inside the forward zone, and then look for a trend change from the forward zone. Are we going to have like some sort of a big pullback? I don't know. Again, the weekly time frame took out the low, but it just continues to drop lower. It really looks like it wants to just pop up a little wick to the upside to fill that imbalance and then to potentially start going lower. But again, until we start seeing like a little bit of a bullish shift, we cannot really expect this. Or maybe NFP is going to come in, like maybe spike the market into that high. We don't know. But currently we're bearish. So keep following that bearish flow. And with that being said, I want to wrap it up here. Bitcoin uh, is holding from that zone, right? So after quite some chop, moves up, moves down. I don't care about crypto right now. So yes, that is it. Right now, the situation we have is that we're trading either at a higher high on the Dixie, which means that we're going to be having a lower low on EU, a lower low on GU, and uh, lower lows across all the pairs. So again, right now, it's a good idea to be trading a counter trend trade. Although again, I do not advise you to do so. Much better wait for the market to align bearish and go with the real trend. So, for example, Euro and EJ, you can be looking for the market to, to kind of make your trend change, then trade it towards the high. Or, of course, you can be looking to trend follow. Same thing with the Aussies. Preferably trade an USD pair rather than the JPY because the JPYs are tricky and the USDs have a very clear intention. Uh, UJ made this very nice TC down, which is also a 30-minute break. So, it does look good for a, for a nice retracement lower on the foliage so let's see if we can get shorts on this one gu coming back to the zone so i'm just gonna stop the video right now and see if we can get any longs from here gj wait for clear alignment before you take a trade gold keep shorting the guy right because it's just very bearish and indices they're also very short bias apart from nasdaq so again give them some time and wait for a high probability setup so fanatics i hope you enjoyed this one hopefully it put you a little bit up to date if you have been confused with the recent markets um I'm preparing some educational videos for you, uh, some reels as well. Some really good stuff is about to come. So, but time to really focus on trading because I really want to finish the year strong, uh, working on some new stuff for my community as well, some new entry models and stuff like this. So, uh, yes, amazing times are ahead of us. So, wishing you an incredible week. Talk to you on Saturday and trade safe.